Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz and that's Ivan. We're about to take a quick walk through my craft room. I want to show you where things are in progress right now and we will revisit this when I have the rest of the room appointed window treatments, skirting, things like that. But for right now, I've got a lot done and Barb and Deb have been asking me to share it. So we're just entering the craft room from the hallway. So I'm gonna to turn to my left. We have a stairway that goes upstairs. And this is the wall that I chose to put my floss rack on. If you are looking for information on that floss rack, it's something that I designed and my husband put together and that can be found on our video number 98. I found these two tall, narrow cupboards with the baskets. You had to purchase them separately, but I like them. And that's Ivan's little play basket down there. And I have fabric and some finishing fabric that I use on those tall, narrow shelves. I started to mention I found those in Lakeside Collections. They have a website. You can find all kinds of interesting things there. I also found this cabinet at the same place. And these are both in the same color as my shelving that you'll see a little bit later. So I have my fabric divided by count on the shelves here so that I can easily find it if I'm looking for it. I have my little dry erase board on the side. And then this is the mason jar flower holder that Deb got me. Notice there's water but no flowers. Um, the ones I had in there are no longer pretty to look at. I have baskets in the top. They hold floss that needs to be loaded when they are put back onto the floss rack. And Barb helped me put all my floss away when she was here a couple weeks ago. That was really sweet. There's a pattern hanging there. I'm about ready to grab the floss and fabric for that I want to start. It's a drawn thread pattern I found the other day at Stitches Unlimited when I was working. I found that little decoration that says gather in blues and browns at home, home goods. Yes. I was out with my friend Linda and I found that. And then I just have a little shelf at the top. <laughs> and that wall is the stairwell. I'm gonna back up, just give you a, a little bit broader look at that. And then I have a few samplers hanging there on the wall as you go up. Those are the first samplers I think I did, three of them. Next to that, I have an old filing cabinet the top lifts up and slides down the back, and that's where my patterns are. There's a joke about where my patterns are right now with Deb. There, there are a few here and a few there. The ones in the bin up top are some that I have a current interest in. That's my stitch board. You'll see that perhaps in the next video. There's a stitch I want to share with you that I found that's really neat in a magazine. The floss rack, by the way. If you were interested in details on that, those details are on video number 98. And then this little pin cushion and receptacle for threads is a beautiful little piece of work that I found on Etsy in a small entrepreneur shop. And it's called Curry Bungalow. She does beautiful work. You can also buy kits to make it yourself if you're that crafty. This little stand here, I just reappropriated. It's actually like a plant stand, only I turned it upside down to hold some of my different rolls of things and my yard sticks, just to keep them out of the way until I decide where they're gonna go. And there's a few things that'll go on the wall that are still in there. Down under the patterns, I have my bead kits. I have a a bin of different Mill Hill kits. And then I have in that bottom basket are my frames, scroll rods, cue snaps, lap stands, things of that nature. I have a little bin that was on a bookshelf. This is just temporary till I decide where it's gonna live. 
And then there are my Just Nan mice and humbug patterns, things of that nature. This basket I found at Home Goods a long time ago when Deb and I were shopping. And that is just holding scraps of fabrics, things that I might use for ornaments and whatnot. I just toss them in there. And then those two baskets hold odds and ends. The bottom one is holding what Deb and I refer to sometimes as my archived projects, the ones I'm not currently working on that I don't even consider something that's in progress, but something that I've just set aside for a while. And the middle basket there is also some more patterns. Mm -hmm. Again, a joke. Give you a quick look at the uh, sampler. Get to an angle where you can see it. This is by Nancy Rossi. And I really enjoyed doing it. It was done on Salem cloth, which is a really soft Ada. And it was a kit. I bought it at an outlet in a shopping area near here when I was visiting my parents back when I still lived in Maine. So that would have been the ooh, 1980s, if you couldn't tell by the colors. And then the one above it here is also a Nancy Rossi pattern. She had about five of these sampler patterns that were really pretty. And I have them all, but I've only stitched three. And then this one was one that I did for my mother. I think I showed it on a video. I got it at a shop called Needle in My Hand in Wilton, Maine. And it was a design done by the shop owner. And it was the first frameable piece I think I ever did. I did it for my mom. And when mom passed away, I got it back and I hung it here in my living room. If you were coming in the hallway, straight ahead of you then, would be this server that I've sort of reappropriated in my craft room. I use the drawers for odds and ends. The crate on the left is needle point canvases and odds and ends. Then I have some projects that are in progress on R&R &R Productions lap stands. And I have those collapsed and sitting there. On the top, just some pieces. This one, I picked this up at Nordic Needle when Deb and I went on a retreat up there. And you can put anything you want to in the front of it. And the back is sort of a scrapbook. You can open it up. And inside I have pictures of things that I've stitched. And this tree was made by Deb's husband, Matt. And it sits here. I have little lights on it. And then I have some pieces I did that are fobs or ornaments. There's two seasonal fobs by Lizzie Kate. And then an ornament for the Halloween season, fall. That was by Hands On Design. We did that in a jamboree class. This was from a Just Cross Stitch magazine. It's a Quaker mouse pattern that I did. These were Seika and Company watercolors. These were little scissor fobs. They're more or less a needle point, but they're done with floss instead of yarn. And in the back there is a shepherd's bush fob. And then this one was a pattern in a magazine, Cross Stitching Country Crafts, a long time ago. It says, sorry, gun stitching. The curry bungalow, by the way, I forgot to mention. The piece that I showed you, I'll go back to it here so that you can see it so you know what I'm referring to. This piece right here that I got for Deb and I, that you can see the details on and find on video number 127 if you wanna look for that. Also, the beading kits, I did a series on those and that would be video 109 if you like to do Mill Hill projects. I have a huge plant that I have nursed and taken care of for about the last 10 years since my husband's mother passed away. It was about 10 inches tall when I got it and it's called a crown of thorns and it's just beautiful. It gets large groups of flowers on the top and it is self-cleaning and it just continues to grow. It loves the sunlight so I keep it in here. This bookshelf here holds my beading 
and odds and ends for finishing. Also has some kits in it, some things that are in progress that I have to finish. And they fit nicely in the bins and the bins tuck inside each other. I can get two in a cubby. I really like the storage. And I got that at Ikea, the cabinet. The, it's actually a bookshelf sideways. On top of that is a block that Matt, Deb's husband, made for me and her. And it holds our scissors and scissor fobs. These are peyote scissor fobs. I enjoy making those. The two on the right are Christmas fobs by Fern Ridge. The two on the left are non-seasonal by Fern Ridge. The little girl is Felicity Rose. And the train is something I did in honor of my husband, who is a model train enthusiast. And the two in the center are my designs. Christmas on the right, and then the one on the left is sort of my idea of a contemporary pomegranate basket. Um, just repeated over and over. I really like the colors. It's a pretty one. So thank you, Matt. He made us those blocks. In the center is a sort of a take on a dough bowl. I found it in a, a shop called the Tin Bin in Lancaster. And it's, I really don't even know the, the material it's made out of, but it was perfect for these pillows. And I have it filled with some of my fall pillows and then two just sort of general. One is a happy fun day, I think it says. And the other one was a, a freebie pattern I did at a lock-in. The other four pillows in the front all came from just cross-stitch magazine patterns, whether it was Halloween or their limited edition fall when they put out their Halloween ornaments. If you enjoy peyote or want to find out more about it, I have an instructional peyote video number 51. And then we have another video where we have several finishes shown and that's video number 91 and a half. This tree here on top of a sort of a double function filing cabinet with a drawer on top. I, I know it doesn't go with the furniture, but it's sort of eclectic and it serves its purpose until I find a different place to put the things that are in it. But this tree was made by Matt after the first one he made us and I've decided this is my strawberry tree. So I have many of my strawberries. This was a kit by, I think it's a, see, oh, I'm gonna draw a blank on this. Um, it was a kit given to me in a swap and I did it, stitched it and finished it myself. I had a good time with that. This is a Blackbird design pattern that was in a Just Cross Stitch magazine. This one was from a class we took with Hands on Design and Beth Seal. And this was a class we took with Nikki's Creation, this one that's done on the checkered fabric there. This was a class with Beth Twist. And that was um, Heartstring Samplery. And it was fun. It also has a an Oort tin that went with it that's in my curio cabinet. And that strawberry in the back there is gorgeous. It's an embroidered strawberry. Excuse me while I make my way around here. And that was given to us by a friend of ours. Uh, Deb has one too named Sheila. And Sheila, we met her and went to a jamboree with her quite some time ago. She became part of our posse. Only We've only posseed one more time since then, um, but we really appreciate those strawberries. Then I just have a couple of magazine bins, and then this little bin to the left there, I have some kitted patterns in. This curio cabinet, I did a video and showed its contents not long ago. There's the tin I mentioned that was part of that strawberry class with Beth Twist. And you'll recognize a lot of the things that are in here, but if 
you want to see the contents of the curio cabinet, there is another video on that. I won't take up a lot of time there. Um, this particular piece of furniture is the same as the one we just looked at. It's an Ikea bookshelf. And in there I have a couple of bins. This particular bin, these two here are drawers and I really like that. I have like my thread organization, things that like um, floss rings and things that you want to sort your floss with in here. And then I have um, varying things in the other ones just depending on what what I store in them. And I am in the process right now of finding a particular way to keep all my tools because you'll see I have this bin that we got at Hobby Lobby, Deb and I. She found it and did this exquisite finish on a hands-on design piece called Stitch Every Day. And so I ordered the bin, but I haven't put anything in the top of mine. I just have some things sitting on it. It's a glass top and it lifts up. It's very, very nicely made. I have not changed the color of mine. She did refinish hers. So I have that that I can put some tools and things in and then these drawer sets that I just showed you. And then you'll see another set of drawers that I put together uh, when I was putting the craft room, appointing the craft room. Um, and eventually I'll decide where I want my different tools. This is a box. It's a needlework organizer box by Potoki. And if you want to see more about Potoki, and in a minute I'll show you a stand. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful nesting box. It has different boxes of different sizes. So again, like I said, I have a lot of ways I can store my tools. And I just have not decided where I want to put what tools and where I want things to be permanently. Let me just, now that I've mentioned um, Potoki to you, there is a video that we did about the stands, video 104. This piece right here, I'm sorry, um, has my dad and my uncle on it, their brothers, is going to hang here between the big entertainment center and the window once I finally get my window treatments done. So let me turn here just a second. I have a chair for company to stitch with. I have two of these cricket chairs as I refer to them. Um, one's in the bedroom and I bring it out if I have company and we want more than one extra chair. But this is my stitching spot, my recliner. Ivan just now got off of it, so that was nice of him. I keep my craft bag. Deb and I got those off of Hershner's. She had ordered it, I had seen it, she came over with it. I ordered it that very day. It's wonderful. And then my stitching table. This is the other stand I mentioned by Potoki. It's an M3 is the design of it. I really enjoy this. I use this pretty much exclusively for my silk gauze stitching because that's what I usually use these embroidery hoops to do. Whether they're Hardwick hoops or other styles, it doesn't matter. It's a a narrow hoop is what it holds. It does not hold a normal Q-snap, so you have to use it just with embroidery hoops. And that piece, by the way, is by Erica Michaels, and I've gotten a lot more progress. You'll hear about that in our next video. I'm looking forward to finishing that, and that is going to be a strawberry, and that'll hang right over there on my strawberry tree when I'm done. I love <clears throat> fall and candy corns and pumpkins, so that's that's my re my treat for when I'm stitching. I just did pick up the Just Cross Stitch Ornament magazine last week when I was at the shop working with Pat, so I'm looking forward to going through it. I have been so busy. Ivan has not felt well this week, and we had to take him into the vets unexpectedly, and so I just have not been sitting down here for much time to get a chance to review that magazine yet. So I'm gonna swing around here and show you what I referred to as the entertainment stand. Let me back up so I can get the whole thing in here. Hi, can you stand, please? Okay, here we go. You can get to see Ivan here probably in a second. I'm trying to get far enough away in the craft room to show you, there we go. Ivan, there you go. Can you say hi, Waggy Tail? Oh, good boy. That's my buddy. 
Oh, nice bow. Good boy. Speak. Oh, instead he gets quiet and shy. Normally he would say something. So, this entertainment center is by Ikea. It took up pretty much the one entire wall in my old craft room, which was now our TV room. And I have it decorated as well as using it for storage. I'll get a little closer and show you each individual area in a second, but I've decorated the top of it. I had fun with that. That was actually one of the first things I did. And then I've slowly worked my way through and decided what I want to keep on here. Up top, I just have some odds and ends, some beads, a crate with some things that I can still put out if I unpack it and get them out. Those uh, stockings are two things that I'm kind of pleased with finishing myself. I did them just like they were on the magazine with beaded hangers. And they're from Blackbird's stocking series. There's 12 leaflets in the series. These are from the spring. I'm not exactly sure right off the top of my head which month. A little figurine. That's a, like a typesetting drawer up there that I have and I'm gonna put some little odds and ends in it right now. The little clock that's up there was my father's. He was a clock enthusiast. He used to work for Hamilton here in Lancaster when he was in his late teens before he went into the military. Then I picked up that little globe at Hobby Lobby and I have my little basket with my favorite teddy bears. That little teddy bear on the right with the red sweater is Oliver. Oliver is very special. He came from England. He came from a stitcher named Edna and she met me through a magazine. In the back was a, a discussion about popcorn patterns, which is a teddy bear pattern. Deb mentioned it not too long ago in one of our videos. She stitched one of my popcorn patterns and they were very popular in the overseas magazines and I had seen them in the early 2000s. So I wrote to her asking her, even though I knew the magazine was outdated, if she happened to have any more. And we became pen pals and we had such a delightful time for about, oh, six or seven years. And then we, we sort of lost uh, touch by mail. And then one of our viewers sent us that project bag that's on the wall. It's also from England. I just think it's special. So I put it up there next to Oliver. I keep some books in there, magazines. These are some of my mice, my Just Nan mice. And if you'd like to do Just Nan mice or you have an interest in them, I have a video showing how I finished my mice. It's video number 14. And oh, I mentioned too that I was doing a little decorating. This is my <laughs> this is my fall decorating right here. The little doll was given to us. Deb and I each have one. They're a little bit different. They're supposed to be she and I uh, by our friend Tina. She made these and one of them was in a movie. Um, I do not remember the movie. It was funny. I think it was a Halloween movie. Anyway, it was really sweet when she sent those to us and I have mine stuffed slightly. I'm still not sure if I'm through stuffing her, but then I have to put her face on and I haven't done that yet. Cause I'm not sure exactly how I want to do it. I might stitch it on and then again I might paint it or draw it on. Just have some band samplers I'm working on up here with the thread that goes with them. Just as a decorative flare but also a way to keep the projects. Then this chest with two drawers is by um, Teresa Miller. Um, she has a, a site Primitive Treasures, I think is the name. I may be off on that, but um, if you Google Teresa Miller on Facebook, you'll find her site. She does beautiful things. And her husband, he works with her on those things. Have just some little odds and ends there. And that Yazi bag in the back, that holds all my different needles. And then I have project bags here. And these project bags, this was kind of fun. This is actually a little bamboo dish rack for your kitchen 
and I found it at Home Goods. And the idea was I could put my project bags in it and stand them up. So that's what's in here. <laughs> it's my dish rec project bag holder. And then underneath, I have a block holding some other peyote fobs. And this block was made for me by a friend named Ron Herr. It was the first block I had and I showed it to Deb and from there Matt went wild with the ones he made us. There's another one behind it that was made by Matt, um, but I need to put that in a different location where I have more room and I need some more scissors uh, in order to display some more fobs. If I didn't mention it, I do have two videos uh, video number one is a teaching video, I believe, or shows finishes. Um, either way, it's video 51 and then video 91 and a half. Those two videos are focused on the peyote fobs. One of them is actually a full length video and I demonstrate how to make that scissor fob, which is my own pattern, so there's no infringement there and I show you how to do all the different segments of it. That was a lot of fun doing the video for people to see. Underneath this basket here I just have some beaded projects that I want to get to this time of the year if I get the chance. Some of them are fall. The smaller ones are fall ornaments. Um, they're Mill Hill kits. That one's for my husband. These two are fun. They're, um, they're magnetic, so they're stuck together. It's a pear and an apple. I really like them. And then these are just gorgeous. Um, that one has always just struck me really sweetly. I like the cardinal, the idea of getting your Christmas mail in the mailbox. This is a beautiful Christmas sampler. And then this one is just so old fashioned. I like it a lot. So I'm hoping to work on some of those. So I have those there. So it's a reminder that I wanted to do them in this longer burger box I have is um, scissors and fobs. And that one down there is a box that needs a little bit of attention to make it sort of a project box. Deb and I saw some that uh, our friend Tina and her daughter received and I found this one just by happenstance. So hopefully I can find another one and then Deb and I can both make ourselves a, a project box, but they're for like taking on travel or whatever and you can put your, your different stitching needs in there. I have um, finishing things in this compartment, Ikea compartment. Um, these are drawers. I have needles and pins in this one. And in that lower one, I call it my hardware drawer. There's extension cords and tools, not stitching tools, but tool tools. The bins underneath are pretty much things that I use to finish, um, whether they're like artistic canvases or frames, things of that nature. That bin is some other projects that I'm not currently working on, but I've got set aside for future. And this, this rack here, I found at Home Goods, and I'm going to ask my husband to hang it here in this space along the bookshelf. I think that'll be nice. On the front of them, those are just the magnets that I designed that go on top of my little Oort box that sits next to my stitching chair, and I rotate them for the season. So the one coming up next will be the cardinal and it'll go on the top. Right now the summer one is up. And this is the real crux of the craft room because this is what I did not have in the back in what is now the TV room, which is a workspace to do finishing work on. So we found the counter at Lowe's. My husband just put some legs under it so that it was stable and one that goes across the middle there so that um, it holds itself up. It's attached to the wall so it won't come forward and it, it holds a good deal of um, weight. So I now can sit here and finish things, um, iron, lay things out, whatever I want to do 
and it has come in so handy and I enjoy it. I picked up the little rotating pen and pencil box here. Again, at Home Goods, it was on sale. Actually, it was marked down and it happened to be exact color of my bookshelves and things. This I actually made in wood shop in high school. It's a big butcher block that was my parents. I had given it to them as a Christmas present and it has a like a bowl cut into it. You can probably see that there. I used a free radial arm saw. That was one of the requirements. We had to use a, a tool differently and I used that to cut the bowl out. That was a lot of fun. So I kept that after they were gone. I wanted to use it. So I use that in here for things that I don't want to, uh, that I need a lot of support under if I'm hammering or something of that nature. And then I keep my beading tools there. You may have seen these two pieces that I finished not long ago. Um, I have hoops and then some Christmas floss rings hanging from that one. In the center is a just a metal, round metal disc that attaches to the wall. It's also from Ikea. And on it are some different magnetic canisters that have lids that easily come off. And I keep different things that I use for finishing and beading up there. And some odds and ends. There's the little lobster needle point fob that I finished. I keep it there to remind me that I did something, finished something in needle point. There's some magnets that are stitching magnets made by Chessie and me. And then some magnets that I picked up out in Arizona when I visited my sister-in-law. And this is a little bin where I have things that I'm in the process of finishing or want to finish soon and I set them there and that way they're in front of me and I remember I'm working on them. And it kind of prompts me to make the time to do it. And again, these are finishing ideas and components that I can use. These are used by Jeanette Douglas to finish her pin cushions that she has done beautiful little pin cushion tops for. I have all four, no, let's see, one, two, three. I have three of these. Um, don't no I do I have all four that's right and this is the one that's currently in process for finishing which is the summer one I have that stitched and I just need to put it together and we'd had some questions about that and I thought I would do that on a short video clip and just show people how I do it so that they see it um, and the, the pin cushion for that is down there then I have the winter and the fall to stitch yet uh, of those two patterns. These are pieces that go to other things that I'm working on that came with the actual kits. And then some odds and ends. And, and I find that leaving things in this basket um, kind of gives me ideas about things I might want to do or use to finish. So I like that. So I just kind of use that as a collection of thoughts, if you will. And then this um, Fleur de Lis, I found that little hook somewhere and I liked it and it also has some floss rings hanging on it some I made some were given to us that one on the top was given to me by a friend Leela and then on my shelves this is my just button company just another button company excuse me collection of the ones that are finished that I have out on display if you like doing those, and then the stocking itself there hanging goes with the scissor fob. That's a Fern Ridge Collection kit, the black and white stocking. I like that too. You might look at video number 42 if you like just another button company, because we do quite a, a video about their pieces and the class we took. These are project rolls. They're filled with things I've finished but haven't framed and I've not decided exactly how I want to finish it. Uh, the one that's closest to us with the flowers and the dark background came from the attic. Uh, Sandy and Leela went to summer school twice now. Last year they brought these for us. We had asked them to pick them up and then Sandy uh, 
said, I'll let you have that one if you make me some scissor fobs. So I'm working on her scissor fobs. I still am, Sandy. I honestly am. I'm going to bring them to you in October. So right around the corner. She's in Alaska. So we, we get together and we catch up on all the things we have for each other and what we've been up to lately. The one in the back is one that she actually made for us, Deb and I. And it's really neat and it's a good size and I've got several pieces in that. This is just a little piece by, um, I think it's uh, My Big Toe Designs did this piece. And it's this too shall pass. And I used a, a variegated thread. Sorry about the glare. It's just the way it is this time of day with the lighting. And then I have some other pieces. The cushion is a Little House Needlework. And then a Hattie and B um, pin cushion that it attaches to that was pre-made that you could buy. The little roll in the front there that holds uh, tools and gadgets is a design by Linda Dury when she had her company Stitching Treasures. And she just recently sent that to me. It was a model that she had done, but the pattern was eaten by her computer when it crashed. So she never produced the kits for that. And then in the back is a Blackbird design pattern. I think it's called Winter Past. And this was actually a project kit. Uh, when you open it, it has all kinds of compartments and components and little stitched things. And this was sent to us as a gift And up top is a box or cart or uh, what do I want to say, tray if you will, that I found in a hodgepodge, like an antique, it's an antique and cross stitch store in Sturbridge. And I got Deb and I each one. She immediately um, refinished hers with some pretty paint. She has hers on her shelf and mine's just all natural. And I just have some other pieces up there that I finished. And that's the box Deb made for us for our Coming to America project. It's gorgeous. She had so much fun with this and it was so cool. Um, she's got a little compass and a book and inside is a place for your floss. I cannot reach it with both hands, but you can kind of see inside there what's showing. It's just really neat. Anyway, I wanted to display it. I should be using it, but I think it's pretty and I have it on display. And then a little birthday sampler I did for my mom a long time ago. And then this is a, a mug. It's actually the back of Hermione and Harry Potter. But McKenna thought that looked like Deb and I. So that was a Christmas present that I got last year. I think it's cool. And then up top here, the last thing as we come full circle, is a piece I did by Diane Arthurs, and it's called Bethlehem, and I've showed it before on our videos. I just like that spot for it. Now Deb's craft room, she has done a tour of hers. I'm going to turn around here and give you the full view again. Um, her craft room is on video number 120, if you want to see hers. And her husband has um, methodically built out all of her storage spaces and her cabinets. Um, he does such a beautiful job with his woodworking. And that's all on our videos. And then she has two videos you might want to visit. The first one being her fall decor video from last year is video 112. That's an awesome video. And then her second one would be the holiday decor video that was the Christmas one, video 117. And it's beautiful as well. You'll get to see her flair. She's very good at decorating. Oh, I just realized I didn't really give you the shot of the decorations I have above my server. I showed you the, the tree. Um, but I want to show you this piece here. This goes back to my great, great great yes grandmother so three greats which is what five generations um and it's hard hanger and it's done with flax and it's just beautiful when my mother was still living 
I was getting ready to come home from Arizona one time when I visited and she said, I want you to have this. She said, I know you will do something with it and display it because you love needlework. And she said, I have had this all these years and it is just gorgeous. The workmanship on it and the stitches and the pulled thread work. And then down at the bottom, I put in that little showcase along with it, two things that we were given. Uh, by viewers. Barbara gave us the one on the left and Sheila gave us the one on the right. We each have one. Um, the one on the right's magnetic. The one on the left we actually added a pin to and we wore them in one of our videos so people could see the pretty work that someone shared with us. And then this little section here with the two teddy bears, those are Dale Burdett. That goes back to the 1980s. I stitched those for my daughter's nursery. I, I shouldn't say I stitched them both. I have several that I stitched, but these two, this one my mother stitched when she was over in South Korea and sent it to me. I sent her um, the book when I was through and she picked that one out. And then this one was my first stitch after grandma taught me how to do it. And I did that one for her nursery. I started it on our visit in Pennsylvania at Christmas time and worked on it in the car all the way home. And if you look really closely, you can see, I didn't know all my X's had to go the same direction. I mean, it looks like somebody had a party on it, but I am so delighted that I still have it because oftentimes people lose their um, early pieces and I'm glad I didn't do anything with those. The kitty cat up there was given to me by a friend, Mim. Uh, I taught her how to cross stitch and she was a quilter and she just took off with her cross stitch and before I moved to Illinois she gave me that and I have put that in a place of prominence ever since. I just love it. And it says Mi Amiga on it. And then to the left just a couple little decorations of see for Christopher and a couple of needle minders on it. And then the Bless This House was a little piece Deb gave me. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing where the craft room is in progress right now. And I say in progress, like I said, because we have some things left to do. And hopefully I'll get Deb over here for some of the final things, but I will eventually pick out my window treatments. And I want to thank you for spending time with us. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not and you would like to be, um, we talk about subscribing and the need to be a public with your your uh, account on YouTube so that you can participate in our subscriber giveaways. Um, if you want to look at the details on how to do that, we talk about them on both video 101 and 113 in either the conversation during the video or the description box underneath the video. Thank you very much for visiting my craft room. And I hope you have a very nice day. Come back and see Country Stitchers. And as always, share the joy of needlework. Bye-bye.